I take the floor. After the representative of Palestine has made a speech, wailing speech, crying speech. A repeat of what has happened before. It happened last year, it happened the year before, it happened in 1963. The voice of Palestinians being expressed here, the cry of the Palestinians reaching our ears here. For how long are we going to listen to the leader of the PLO? When shall we ever listen to the president of the state of Palestine? When shall that ever come, Mr. Ben Moon? You are leaving us leaving us before the settlement of the people of Palestine. They are not settled yet. They are in a state which belongs, I don't know to whom, not free, some other people building in their ho building homes in what is supposed to be their state. Almost every day, someone is killed or disturbed or arrested. When shall this ever cease? All of us here are born out of the struggle for our elders. We were all once upon a time in colonies. All of us, I was just trying to turn over in my mind who of you, of us, came straight from an independent state to Addis Ababa. None. We were once, if not slaves, but servants of colonialists, servants of imperialists, colonized people, disadvantaged people. Today, yes, we may say, oh, we are free, but our ancestors were not free. They are blacks across the Atlantic. There are others who lie deep down the sea. Skeletons have vanished. The oceans have worked on their skeletons. Our forefathers as they were being dragged going across. And across to a country where they labored, toiled, and died for. 
they are no better. There is Obama today, yes. What is he? What is he? A voice is made to speak their language, to act their act. And not our act, but their act. They are still superiors. The blacks go to Harlem when uh, in New York you will shed tears. Today, if there is no education for all, no health for all. Blacks in the streets. And nobody seems to talk about it. But they instead still want to talk about us. They are everywhere in Africa, if not physically, but through NGOs, through through spies, through pretenders who come to us and say they are here in Africa to assist us. Even in groups, armed groups on our, some of our territories. What help is coming from them? Regime change. We are supposed to be free and independent, Mr. Ban Ki Moon. <laughs> supposed to be free, the 54 countries. We come to the United Nations, it's ceremonial. Every year, September, we are there. We pay lots of money to go there. And the, to the General Assembly, we make speeches. We go back home year in, year out. But the bosses in the Security Council say, you shall never have the powers that we have as permanent members. And we have asked and asked and asked. And asked and asked. Reform, reform the Security Council. We are, I want to tell you, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, you are a good man. <laughs> you are a good man. But of course, we can't make you a fighter. That's not what your mission was. We will fight a fight for our own identity, for our own integrity and personality as Africans. We are Africans. If we decide, as we shall certainly do so, one of these days, that down within the United Nations, we are not members of it, others are real members of it, we are artificial members of it, 
and we, we can't continue to be artificial members of it. How can only a handful of people, in fact, it's only America and the Europeans, those who say they are white-skinned, because they are white-skinned, anybody else who is not like us shall not have the power and strength, integrity that we have. If the United Nations is to survive, we must be equal members of it. Me equal members, members who can, who can say when we go to the body that we are now speaking truly as members with a voice that's understood, respected, and honored. But no, that's not it. We met in Swaziland some years back to discuss the reform of the United Nations, especially the Security Council. And we came up with Kwazulu-Natal consensus. We have said we want two permanent, permanent members with a veto if the veto is to continue, although we don't like that creature called the veto. But if it's the veto is to be retained, those members must also have the veto. If the veto is to be abolished, fine. They shall be like others. But no, two members, 54 countries here. This is the body, the body of respected people, the body of Africa. So I wonder whether you have told them that we also are humans. <laughs> tell them, tell them that we are not ghosts, that we also belong to the world, and the world called, part of the world called Africa, and Africans shall no longer I tolerate a position of slavery, slavery by any other name, by denial of right, slavery by being treated in a manner we regard as not equal to the manner in which they treat themselves. We, I hope, you will hear from us on this issue of the reform of the United Nations. But you have done a good job for us. You have visited our countries. You have wept with us where disease has visited us, whether it was Ebola or some other, where calamities have occurred, where fights have taken place, where terrorism also has affected us. We thank you for that concern as a human being and so that distinguishes you from others of course you don't come from those countries <laughs> we know where you come from of our founding fathers our saying we are 14 deriving from colonies, 
But of course, we still, we still have Sahrawi. Sahrawi is a debt we owe to the people of Sahrawi. When shall we pay that debt? When shall we? When shall we decide that the people of Sahrawi become independent. Our charter says the colonial boundaries that we found in 1963 shall be the boundaries we respect. We are all free. Let the people of Sahrawi also be free. <laughs> With regard to the need to adhere, allowing history to be rewritten in order to justify the blatant occupation and colonization of a sister country, as I said, is what is happening in regard to the Palestinians. And we should also call upon our cooperating partners, especially those with whom we have standing partnerships, to respect our AU, African Union, position on Sahrawi Republic within the context of our partnership frameworks. Similarly, I wish to express my disquiet over the developments leading to the EU summit on migration that was held in Valletta, Malta. Allow me to recall that we had reached an understanding with our friends in Europe. I stammer to say friends, but nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless I managed to pronounce the word <laughs> friends in Europe that we would have a summit to address the issue of migration, which is of common concern to all of us. Alas, at the last minute, we had only a few of us from Africa would be invited. While I fully appreciate that we are affected differently by migration, there is need for a collective, need for a collective approach for the common good of all of us. Let the common interests of Africa unite us, please. Unite us on this and other global issues as well. For, as that song by that group of singers rang, united we stand, divided we fall. So on this one we were divided. Let's not be divided. The principles of unity, solidarity, and freedom bequeathed to us by our forebearers from the bedrock of organization. That those principles must continue to be our principles. We wouldn't be here if 1963 had not occurred. 
And I can tell you, even as we, as freedom fighters then, sought assistance in the South, it was not just in the South. I remember about 1978-79, moving to Guinea-Conakry, to Senegal, before getting to the OAU, just pleading for assistance, assistance humanitarian, if it could be given us assistance, military, of a military nation, if we could get it. And we were getting it here and there, here and there, those who could give. Algeria, training. Egypt of NASA, lots of training. And as 1963, the inaugural conference took place. The leaders came from all these countries. Ben Bella had won his struggle, the struggle, the Algerian struggle of France. France had, after all the other Francophone countries had got their independence, Algeria was denied that independence by de Gaulle. Why? Because Algeria, he said, is part of France. Algeria, part of France. <laughs> Algeria, part of France. Mediterranean Sea, yes, he said, Algeria cannot choose as others chose to say yes, or no, no choice was given it because it was regarded as part of France. That's why the Algerians took the arms. And that's why Ben Bella could come. And we sang glory to him. And of course, he regarded that the independence of Algeria was not complete uh, until the independence of all the other countries, including South Africa, was also uh, acquired, until those other countries were also free. And Ben Bella, we still uh, remember what he said. He put aside his speech. He said, let us die a little for South Africa. Let us die a little for South Africa. And we used to call it in our camps, the die a little speech. The contribution made. So they are no Gruma. Ghana is not free until the rest of Africa is free. That spirit and those principles, unity, dedication, commitment, sacrifice, the givenness that that struggle is our struggle, should remain with us. That suffering of people in Liberia is our suffering. We should have said that. The people dying 
because of Boko Haram in Nigeria, uh, up to Israel. And I tell you, we knew Nigeria as we knew our palms because we used to go there. We used to have lots of cadres trained there in Kanu. We used to go to Kaduna, lots of other places. And Nigeria gave in 1978, I think, 78 years, when they had not been paying their subscriptions because there was a difference in the OAU on the issue of Biafra, so they had decided not to pay subscriptions to the, to the OAU. But then, when they decided to pay the subscription, the subscription was now seven million pounds or dollars. But when they paid it back, they said, it should not go just into the coffers of the OEU. It must be used for purposes of training, military training of Zimbabwean cadres. So, <clears throat> Komo and I and uh, Brigadier Gaba used to go to the camp where to the base where this group of our cadres was, was, was being trained. That is a contribution we made. I could give you other forms of contribution made. I will be, after this, talking about, I'll be talking about Hashim Bita who headed the committee, Liberation Committee established in Tanzania. And the Liberation Committee was meant to source arms for us. And all our Liberation Committees were there. From uh, Guinea-Bissau and Cape, Cape Verde, Cabral. We were all in, in Tanzania. So there it is. Africa, wanting the, the Africans who were still under the burden of colonialism, colonialism to be free. And that is why I have great respect for all, all of us. To me, you come to my country, it's your country. I go to your country, it's also my country. You can't chase me. You can't chase me and I can't chase you. That's it, the African spirit. We had to fight for it also. You had to starve for it to sacrifice for it. And now you get some, some people still saying, because we are white and you are black, we can't give you the honor of equality in the Security Council. Nonsense. <laughs> that should stop. Mr. Bakimun, just tell them for the last time, just, just as a message that you have heard for the last time from here, that there should be real equality in the Security Council. We can't just be coming to the General Assembly to make empty, hollow speeches and go back home. Nobody takes care of all the concerns we express. No. And anyway,
the headquarters is actually of, of the United Nations is misplaced. <laughs> Where do you have most of the people? You have 1.2 million people, billion, I mean 1.2 mil, million people in, in, in India, 1.3 in China, and Africa, we are getting to uh, nearly a billion also. Now put us together, just these three, and then put those with the white faces and, <laughs> and pink, pink noses, put them, put, put them together as against us. How many are they, even man to a man? And do we allow that, that that group should continue to, you know, to harass us in our, even in our independent countries? Regime change, Mugabe should not be there, we want someone else. The creator was telling me the other day that, that he, has, he had been told that, oh no, your party, Chama Chama Pinduzi, had been in power for too long. You must now allow another party also to take over. Is that democracy? And that was coming from Europe. Tell them to shut their mouths. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, I am about to hand over the collective stewardship of this august body. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to you, my colleagues, for the support you so generously rendered me and my country during our chairmanship of this continental body. I thank you immensely. I was very happy. I visited a number of countries, sometimes just to attend inauguration ceremonies, sometimes also to, to be present as, as I was in Mali at a signing ceremony. And wherever, where I was asked to come, as in Tanzania, at the youth conference there, and in several others. I did travel quite a lot, and uh, I enjoyed it very much to be with the people and to be with the young people. And our message, of course, is always that tomorrow, today, is our day. Tomorrow, you, the young people, is your day also. And. And we, the fathers of today, we, the mothers of today, women are also with you women. Um, together we must work for our children and groom them up, see they are healthy, see they are educated, see they have skills, and see they are ideologized they know the history of their country. They are proud to be Africans. So let's bring our youth up. So uh, it was really an honor to guide the work of our organization in the past year and make our own humble contribution towards building the Africa we want. In conclusion, I would like to reaffirm my unwavering support and that of my government to the incoming pers person, 
to my brother of Chad. I am confident that the assembly will lend the incoming chair his full support. So the president of Chad, we wish you well. We wish you well. And whatever support you would want from me, I will still be there. I will still be there until, <laughs> until God says, until God says, come. <laughs> then I'll go and join the others. But as long as I'm still alive, I'll still have the punch. <laughs> so I want to thank you. And thank you a lot. I want also to thank the uh, Commission, my Zuma, and your Commission and Commissioners for all the support that they gave me and our togetherness as we looked uh, forward together and uh, we tried to put things together. So I uh, say forward ever, backwards never. Asante sana. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias. Tatenda siabonga. Merci, Excellence, Monsieur le Président. Euh...